Thanks ZipRecruiter for sponsoring a portion of this video. So here we go. It is time. This is our Avengers Endgame moment. We've been building to this video for a while. Uh, with all the two videos we've done, we are now going to compare head to head really two of the three top dog techs out there. We're going to put Cutie OLED head to head up against OLED and try to pick a winner that's best for you. So for this video, the two TVs I'm using to compare, I think it's important that you know, on the QD OLED side, it is the Sony A95K. And as this filming, only Sony and Samsung uh, are making QD OLED sets. On the OLED side, we're using the best of the OLED world, and it's a W OLED panel from LG. It is the LG G2. I'm not gonna do a huge deep dive into the features of the TV sets themselves, which ones have HDMI 2.1 ports, anything like that. This is just comparing the technology. And these are the two best representations of the respective techs. I think it's important to go over the biggest differences first between the two technologies. So they're both based on OLED. Tech has started to kind of branch off in different directions. So variations of the sort of old or OLED tech has started to come out recently. And at their core, they're more or less the same. They both have diodes that turn on or off. So black levels are black and practically the same. But W OLED, which is what LG is using, is basically a brighter version of the OLED that we've had for at this point almost 10 years. Uh, the Sony A95K, like I said, is our QD OLED example. And that gets brighter than previous OLED versions, but also has quantum dot tech over the diode, which essentially translates to not only a brighter image in the whites, but also a brighter image in the colors. I wanna get this out early. The preconceived notion that I had, that QD OLED was going to be just leaps better in every category than OLED has been. And that is definitely not the case. It's not like an SD to HD type jump. Um, it's moderate and not as noticeable in some areas as it is in others. So if you haven't seen previous TV videos that I've made, uh, I've been trying to decide kind of selfishly what TV I was going to buy for, for my house now for the better part of six months. I actually landed on the LG G2. That's the one that, that I own, but it's because that I chose it. Don't think it's a spoiler between who's going to win this video. There are a lot of reasons that went into that purchase, especially versus QD OLED, and those reasons might apply to you and they might not. Hopefully by the end of this, though, you'll have a better idea of which set's going to be right for you. There were two big reasons that I picked the LG G2 over a QD OLED panel, and just a giant one that was a non-starter for me was size. As of this filming, the biggest QD OLED set you can get is 65 inches. I wanted a set that was 75 or larger. LG offered a bunch of different sizes of their OLED set. I went with an 83 inch G2. That was really the, the biggest reason. I also decided to go for the W OLED version versus traditional OLED because it gets brighter. Like I said, this is about 30% brighter than traditional OLED, which is absolutely incredible. And it's not to say the QD OLED doesn't get bright because it definitely does. In fact, it gets brighter, but in different ways. In fact, if you put these two TVs side by side, and you'd have to be a nuts human being to do that. The LG G2 gets a tad brighter in the whites than the Sony QD OLED does. But as far as like the tech is concerned, the brightness levels of both sets side by side is so minuscule in the brightness and the white levels. When, and with the G2, colors are vibrant, whites are extremely bright, and the clarity that comes out of the TV is one of the best that I have ever seen. I've been finding myself actually going back and trying to find like old movies and TV shows that are in Dolby Vision so I can rewatch them on this set. Blacks are perfectly black. There's absolutely no blooming and the contrast is striking and perfect. It is everything that I wanted from an OLED set for my house, but that's not to say it is a perfect set. The TV is, first of all, very, very reflective. And that's not to say every W OLED is going to be as reflective but they tend to be very, very glossy. And having a glossy screen tends to mean the sharpness and detail of the image will be higher, but also means any light you've got in the room will be very, very noticeable. And as you can see here, it is certainly noticeable. Now the brightness of the LG G2 tends to cancel out those glares better than sort of any other OLED from a few years ago, but it is still there. I have a lot of windows and practical lights facing the TV and they can clearly be seen, but despite that glare, 
The set is still incredibly bright and vibrant. So much so, the glare is really not a giant deal, at least in my home. And when it came to my purchase decision uniquely, I knew that was gonna be an issue going in. So it wasn't a surprise, I wasn't blown away by it. Something at least you should know, because I had to go the OLED side. It's not to say that Sony's version of QD OLED is not reflective, just not as bad. You might not see it, but this TV video that you are watching took four people to make happen. From me, to editors, to scripting, to post-production work, it takes a lot of people to put out the kind of content that we put out. And that's not unique to what we do. Most works and jobs take a lot of people. Finding the right people is a science. Finding the right person can set a business on just a straight line up. Finding the wrong person can do the exact opposite. That's why ZipRecruiter has become such an invaluable tool in the hiring process to find the good candidates or the right fits from the ones that are not. And the reason ZipRecruiter is so good, aside from just having a lot of people out there and being the most respected name in the hiring game, they are using a combination of algorithm science, what appears to be a bit of magic, to proactively show you the right candidates. Even before they have applied, they look at their skill sets, look at their experience and say, these people might be the right fit for you. They even have built-in features that make it super easy to reach out to those qualified candidates with a single click. They basically do all the work for you. ZipRecruiter is so good at what they do that four out of five employers, so by my math, 80%, get a quality candidate in the first day. No matter whether you are a small business or a big business, ZipRecruiter has the tools and the people to set your business off on the right path. This, is, this whole process is so easy. The hardest thing that you have to do is remember just this custom URL, ziprecruiter.com slash John Rettinger. That's where you go to try ZipRecruiter out for free. Again, ziprecruiter.com slash J-O-N-R-E-T-T-I-N-G-E-R. Now while the W OLED, in this case on the LG G2, can get really bright in the whites, does not get brighter than QD OLED in color representations. And the differences between the two in color brightness are actually really noticeable without them being side by side. And again, that's thanks to the quantum dot tech that's over the diodes on the QD OLED set. That will like enhance the overall image that you're watching. And the picture that comes out of the QD OLED is arguably the best on the market. I'm not sure what the average TV viewer necessarily notice the main differences. They might even prefer the brighter whites of the W OLED, but overall image that comes out of the QD OLED is brighter and more vibrant, even if the whites are just slightly dimmer than W OLED. Now, had there been an 83 inch QD OLED set available when I made my purchase decision, I probably would have gone that way but I love my LG G2. I love watching it, I love the way the content looks on it. It is a beautiful set, and really no matter which way you go, you're not gonna be disappointed at all. The nuances and differences between these two picture qualities is so small. One thing to consider though, OLED tech has been around, like I said, for 10 years. QD OLED is still relatively new. Not to say issues are going to arise, but it's not as tested. Uh, as OLED tech. That wouldn't stop me from buying a QD OLED set, but it might give you pause or at least make you want to consider maybe an extended warranty if you're going to go the QD OLED route. But the, the complete deal breaker and the biggest downside for me of QD OLED was size. Again, right now they are capped at 65 inches and I'm sure larger versions are coming very soon. If you have it in your head that you want a set bigger than 65 inches, then decisions made for you. You want to go OLED, you want to go W OLED, and you want to get one of those sets. If you're in the 65 inch or smaller category size, decision gets a, a bit muddier. So like the W OLED sets, QD OLED does suffer from reflections. Granted, it's not as bad as the LG2 example we have here. Both have reflective screens. Uh, OLED's best environment though, is still a dark room. So if you have the ability to put either of these sets in a space like that, uh, you're going to love life. In a bright room, know that with either set, you're gonna have some glare issues to deal with. If gaming is your jam on both of these two sets, the differences here are even less. Uh, both will look almost identical. Uh, you wanna make sure you do get a set though that has 4K, HDMI 2.1, 120 hertz, which if you get a top of the line OLED set or any of the QD OLED sets, you'll be covered. The last difference I'm gonna talk about here is maybe the biggest decider for people, and that's price. 
And listen, neither of these TVs using as the example uh, are cheap by any means, but the Sony is really expensive. Uh, the 65 inch is $4,000. And as of this filming, I don't see the price going down anytime soon. LG G2 gets close to $4,000 as well, but that's in the 77 inch price. So you get a bigger TV for less than 65 inches with the LG. LG offers bigger TVs at a higher price. If you're going 65 versus 65, the Sony is over $1,000 more than the LG. That is a very, very big difference. If you're gonna compare the LG G2 to Samsung's QD OLED, the pricing though is a bit more on par. I love doing versus videos. I love doing them with phones and I always try to declare a winner and a winner is usually very obvious. I don't wanna say both of these are great, but it boils down for me to this. If you're making the decision to spend a decent amount of money on QD OLED versus OLED, the first question like I've talked about is size. If you want a bigger than 65 inches, go W OLED and know that you are not going to be getting a lesser TV. Decision I made, I don't regret it for a hot second. So on the other side, if you want to spend the money, you wanna be on the cutting edge of technology or like a high level cinema nerd and color accuracy matters more to you than anything else. I mean, the Sony TV is absolutely incredible. There's a reason that Sony monitors are usually the gold standard for color accuracy. You're going to absolutely love the set. Now I haven't seen the Samsung version of QD OLED yet, so I can't evaluate how that looks, but Sony to LG, the decision was a relatively easy one for me to make. For most people though, I would advise save the money, go W OLED. You're not gonna have these side-by-side -side to notice any difference whatsoever. But if you want that extra color accuracy and that matters to you, you're still gonna be pretty happy uh, with your brand new Sony A95K.